Hello, James here, and we're continuing on with our test from last time on Eco Mode with the iPedal. And it's been about two weeks now, and we've currently covered 200.3 miles at 3.6 miles to kilowatt hour. And if we look at here in the metrics and in Fahrenheit, it's 322.4 kilometers or 17.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and we've got 53 kilometers of range and in miles that's 33. What the issue now is the reason why it dropped from 3.8 down to 3.6 is because I've been a bit naughty and actually used the, the sports mode about three times and basically give it like a couple of squirts uh, twice because I was showing off and <laughs> once because I was just trying to get out of traffic. So I just basically hit the drive mode twice just to get into sports mode and um, basically kick down on the accelerator. So we're going to stick with eco mode for now and we're going to go on iPedal. But seeing that we're on the last couple of miles and the charging points are, are, are kind of used up, I'll probably go somewhere else to charge. And because in Livingston, it's a valley, uh, we kinda, we're kind of in the middle of the valley, so we have to drive down, then up, and then back down again. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a run up to the top of the valley and double back round on the roundabout and come back down. And I'm going to try and eke it out as much as I can. So we're going to see how much the car use in um, energy consumption as we go up and also what we gain when we come back down. So before I get carried away with the test here, let's talk about how to activate the different modes and how to activate the different regen levels. The Ionic 5 has five different modes of regen and there's also a level zero, which is great for if you have dust in your brakes and you want to clear them out. So we're going to talk about the different mode. So on the steering wheel, there's a mode button, drive mode and that switches between Eco, Normal and Sports Mode. Toggling the left paddle, that will take you up on the regen level from zero all the way up to I pedal. And tapping the right paddle, it does the opposite and it will basically take you from I pedal all the way down to level zero regen. And if you hold the right paddle, that will take you to the auto mode, so that will give you auto regen mode. And again, holding the paddle will switch you from auto back down to manual regen modes. And then if you hold the right paddle, that actually slows the car down and it basically uses the full regen of the vehicle to take you to a complete standstill. If you like more of these how-to tip videos, please hit the like and subscribe button and don't forget to smack that notification bell. I'll be sure to fill you in with some more Ionic 5 guide videos in the future. Actually, I might as well sit off here and reset the trip before we go. Uh, I'm just thinking lights. It shouldn't, shouldn't be too much difference with the lights. Also, what you find is the car is very heavy, so when you set off, you'll see the the when we get the reading will be down to two miles per kilowatt hour so if you look here um where is it so if you go into your nav system if you go into settings and general and then go into units you can basically switch to kilometers and fahrenheit and kilometers per kilowatt hour if you want to but we are just going to flip between the two here and we're going to reset that to zero and we're going to head off on iPedal mode. So we're just going to travel to the top of Livingston South and then we're going to head back to this point here and see what sort of mileage that we get or what sort of consumption we get, should I say. So as we're heading up here, you see that it's 1.6 miles per kilowatt hour currently. So it always seems when you're initially taking off, it actually takes quite a big hit, this car, for your consumption. So it likes rolling. It doesn't actually like being stationary. Right. So I am going to switch to this mode here. And what you'll find is on the iPedal mode, 
both motors seems to be working most of the time. There's never really a point where it's only the rear motor, even on eco mode, I find. Um, the one advantage of that is both motors are regening as well, so I'm getting quite a lot of consumption back every time I slow down. So, heading up to the top of Livingston South. Okay, so top of the hill, we're at 1.8 miles to the kilowatt hour. Right, so we're coming back to this mode here, and you see the both motors is regening back into the car. And we're basically just getting all our energy back that we've used from going up this hill. And once again, I'm just feathering the accelerator on iPedal mode. Stop it from coming to a complete standstill. And we're gonna go over this hump. Around the second entrance. And we're gonna drive back to where we started, which was this spot here. Right, so we're back now and we've covered 2.5 miles, 3.6 miles to kilowatt hour using the iPedal mode going up and down the hill. Um, normally I get about four. I think it's because I come down from halfway down the valley as well. So I kind of like coast and then glide back up a little bit. But going up and back to the same spot, we're at 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Both motors are working all the time, uh, be it acceleration or regening. So if we go to kilometers or we go to the metric system, so that was four kilometers and we basically used 17.2 kilowatt per 100 kilometers. So we're gonna reset the trip, go to level two and set it to auto. Keep rolling gear and we're off. So we're doing 30, we're going up the hill. We're at 1.5 miles per kilowatt hour. I I think that's a little bit lower than before on the iPad mode, although we were held up in the lights at the start. So we're currently at two miles per kilowatt hour. We're halfway up and if we go to this mode here, you can see it's just using the rear wheel drive to even go up this hill, just to keep this speed. And now that I'm lifting off, you can see it regening only on the rear. So only one, you're only getting one set of regen here instead of two. So if my calculations are right, this is actually a better mode to be in. Well, no, the iPedal is a better mode to be in if, you're, um, if you've got a lot of hills in your area. We're at 1.9 miles to the kilowatt hour. So here I'm gonna put, applying the brakes a little. So it's, see, it's still regening with the rear motors only. Whereas the iPad will regens with both and I, I, I think that gives you the added benefit. We'll see what sort of mileage that we get here. So if I apply the brakes, you can see both of them is regening as I brake. So is it best to coast or is it best to get double regen with a bit of coasting? Who knows? Okay, yep, and then you saw there that sometimes you actually, both motors are working. I'm not sure how it figures it out. And again, it's switched to single motor on the automatic regen. So I've only really been driving in iPedal mode and I've only played around with the auto. So this is gonna be interesting to see what the difference is once we park up. And over the hump, around this corner on rear wheel drive only. And we're back on our parking space. The temperature's dropped by one degrees centigrade. Don't think that's going to really make much difference. So a moment of truth. Oh, 3.8 miles to kilowatt hour. So that was actually better. Um, that was interesting. So it actually works out better to be in 
auto regen for going up and down hills. So obviously I was completely wrong thinking that the iPedal would work better. I just thought that with both motors regening, you'd probably get more, but it looks like coasting that little bit with letting the car sort of like figure itself out seems to be the best option. So we go to kilometers. So we're back to four kilometers and it was 16.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. It kind of just ticked up there. You're probably getting a point, just under 0.2 miles per kilowatt hour, more efficiency driving in auto mode. But th that was actually quite interesting. I, I was actually quite surprised. Hmm, I was gonna test out, instead of going on auto mode, I'll just go on to level one or level zero, or, 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 or just play around with the regen myself. I don't know, what shall I do? So I had been summoned to do some errands and uh, now it's a little bit late, I had to wait around a bit. So I probably used about 1% of the battery just idling. Uh, overall with this Eco, I, I actually also idled quite a bit. I probably in total in the last two weeks idled for at least two hours I'd say. But we're not going to look too deeply because it's more of a, a daily run. So this is what you'd kind of expect you'd get um, out of a full battery. And for myself, it was two weeks before needing to charge. And I probably would have gone another three, four days without charging. There's no point focusing the camera on me because it's too dark. So you might as well look at the percentage of the battery going down. So we're back here at the... Livingston charging micro hub, I suppose you could call it. It's just a single charger and um, two, two 22 kilowatt AC charge points. Right, we're gonna reset this, level one regen, and we're gonna be off. Again, going up the same hill, the south side of the valley. Well, this is weird, because <laughs> I've been driving on the I pedal for the last two weeks. This actually feels weird because it's not slowing down, it's just coasting. It's uh, strange how quickly you get climatized to different modes. It definitely feels smoother without the I pedal, as in there's less friction. There's always seems to be some sort of friction with the I pedal. Let's head back down, 1.8 miles per kilowatt hour at the top of the hill and we're coming back down. It's pretty much the same as the other mode. And we're back to our parking spot. Right, let's have a look now, see what we get. And we are, oh, 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. So this in the level one and the iPad was pretty much the same. So four kilometers, 17.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Right, so we're gonna reset this and we're gonna be heading off again, level three regen. So once again, setting off for going uphill, your miles per kilowatt hour doesn't, isn't really that great. 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Oh, okay, so seems a bit better for hill climbing on regen three or level three regen. It's hard to see or tell if it's actually doing more or less regen. I'll probably need to use the car scanner app at some point just to see how much regen we're getting. So this is quite a clear run actually. Back to where we were before. Right. And stop. Right, let's have a look. 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. So level three actually beat auto. <laughs> That's interesting. I'm not sure if it's because we had a clear run or if just rear wheel drive with the regen on max is probably more efficient than all the other modes. Right, so for the last test, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like full auto regen or manual regen. So I'm going to start off with level zero and basically I can just play around with it. So we're off again. So fully manual this time, I'm in control. I think I can do better than auto and level three regen. We'll find out. 
Now, when I'm coming back down, do I want to keep it at zero or do I want to have it on level three? That is the question. So 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour at the top of the hill. That's not bad. I'm just going to keep it at zero. I'm just going to coast down here and see what we get. Right, because I'm rolling down too quickly, I am going to set this to level three regen down the hill. So that was me manually flipping the, <laughs> flipping the, the paddles. Right, so what did we get this time? Let's have a look. 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. I wasn't as good as I thought I was going to be. So overall, it looks like level three regen is probably best for going up and down hill or auto even. And both those modes are pretty much similar. Um, you know, give or take the variables of the lights and if we had a clear run or not. That was an interesting little test on the different modes. My uh, manual skills wasn't good enough, obviously. If you were to do it, I'd probably just either stick to auto or level three regen if you're living in a hilly area. Right, I'm gonna go somewhere else to charge because this spot here is still packed with uh, people in it. Right, so overall we've done 224.5 miles and we've covered 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour and we've got nine miles left on the clock so that gives us a grand total of 233.5 miles for a full tank in metrics we have covered 361.3 kilometers consumption 17.6 kilometers per 100 kilometers and there's 15 kilometers left on the clock so that would give us a grand total of 376.3 kilometers on a full tank. And that's the 50 kilowatt charger. Right, so I've started the charge and already we're up to 6%. That's saying we're gonna take one hour 13 minutes to get to 80% and one hour 43 to get to 100 and we're pulling 49 kilowatts. So while the car's charging here, I am just gonna go into relaxation mode and uh, just chill out for a bit. So we kind of lost track of time and it's one hour and eight minutes and we've charged to 76% and we've pulled 59 kilowatt hours. So the remaining time is 35 minutes. I'm just going to stay here and see what happens once it gets to 80%, see if it goes down or not. So it reckons it's going to be 31 minutes to get to 100% and it's still pulling 49 kilowatts, which is pretty amazing. So I might actually just stay here and the minute it drops below 49 or below 48 kilowatts, I'll be heading off. So when people say you need to leave after you reach 80% state of charge because the car starts throttling or that the charger starts slowing down, that was really the old technology. And when I say old, it's, I mean, we had to leave three years ago. And things have just moved on from then pretty rapidly. And with this big battery, there's definitely a larger buffer as well. Even though we've got 72.6 kilowatt usable, it's actually 77, I think it's 77.4 kilowatts um, in total. And that's kind of gives you that buffer on the top and bottom end of the car to keep the battery safe. So people telling you not to charge 100% isn't entirely true with most of the new cars. Right, okay, 88%, I'll bring this camera over, 88% and we've dropped, there you go, four kilowatts, three. I've got a funny feeling of I restart the session, it's gonna jump that back up see what the final numbers are. 68.99 kilowatt hour of energy. 
one hour, 21 minutes. We're up to 88% user requests, session end, exit. There we go. And I'm gonna unplug now. So what have I learned in the last two weeks driving in the eco mode? Well, one, it's not that fun. <laughs> it's just very slow. And um, yeah, you probably get roughly between 3.5 to 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour if you don't switch it to sports mode like me for a few stints and idling as well. If you're idling, turn the motor off, conserve some more energy. So 3.8 is doable. I mean, I'm in Livingston and we're in the valley. So there's a lot of up and downhill driving as you've seen with the test with the iPedal and the auto regen. And it's totally feasible to get 260 miles of range doing that with what we've seen so far. And it's pretty close to the WLTP range that uh, Hyundai has suggested. Would I want to be doing that again? Probably not. I'll probably just drive, put it on normal mode and just drive around. Even if I only get 230 or 210 miles of range, does it really matter if I'm doing local driving? Because frankly, I would either be charging at home and if I was in the rapid chargers, I can just do opportunity rapid chargers or charging sessions. It doesn't, I don't have to run the battery down to charge up. I mean, if I, if I got to the charge point and I'm on 50%, I can just plug it in and I'll still be pulling 49 kilowatts. And that's much more than what I've ever had on the Nissan Leaf. And to tell you the truth, that's good enough for me. All you need to do is have two sessions charging up. No big deal. I was at Living Stadium, Livingston Stadium, and I got a chance to charge her while I go shopping. Then why not? I'm actually back home now, and I wasn't even really thinking about driving the Eco. I just kind of switched off and chatting to you guys and just driving normally without thinking about it. 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. I can live with that. 